So in our last class, we saw an example on estimating work, and I also talked about project-specific cost of capital that is giving you three situations where work is not usable. I said if there is a new business line, that's if a company is going into a new business line, you know the risk with that business to be different. Okay, maybe a company that manufactures bread now wants to start manufacturing sandals, or wants to start manufacturing school bags. The risk as well with that business is different, so they can't use the existing work of that company to evaluate the project. I also said that if they are changing their capital structure, maybe they have a capital structure of 50-50 before and they are changing to 40-60, that is 40% equity and 60% debt, they have to revise their work because at that point the weight is different already, the weight of the, or the proportion of the capital structure has changed. I also said the third situation is when there is a significantly large project. So I didn't know that, I'm going to give you the steps and we'll solve questions. I'll explain the steps to estimating the project specific cost of capital or risk adjusted cost of capital. So the first thing is to identify a proxy company, right? Identify a proxy company. I've talked about this in one of the previous videos. A proxy company is an identical company. An identical company to the company of concern. In every question, there's a company of concern. So the proxy company is a company that is identical. A company that is probably doing the business operation that the company of concern wants to go into. After you identify a proxy company, it means that you get the information of that company, right? What is their business risk, okay? So, number two, you would on gear or dig. <laughs> One is British, one is American. So let's just stick to. Let's just stick to on gear so that we don't be confusing ourselves. That is, on gear, I'll explain. On gear, the better equity of the proxy company, right? Using proxy company's information. Now, let me explain this second step. Why are you on gearing the beta equity of a proxy company? So, I don't know if I've talked about what beta equity is, but it's used to represent risk, right? Finance risk. While beta asset is used to represent what? Business risk. Hmm? This one is business risk. This one is finance risk. So, this one is also called um, asset risk. I think this one is also called equity risk. Hmm? Yeah. So this one is the risk associated with that business. So what you are actually looking for is the risk associated with that business that the company wants to go into. Mm? So I said the company, for example, is manufacturing bread, then they want to start manufacturing sandals. So there is a business risk associated with that school sandals. So that one you want to take from an identical company. I don't know about sandals. We want to evaluate this investment opportunity or this new project. I don't know about school sandals. What is the risk associated with that business? I don't care about the finance risk of the company. Eh? I don't care about the equity beta, right? That's why you are ungearing this. Because when you ungear this, you get this. And the formula to ungear is what? BE. When you are ungearing, you are removing debt element out of something. I told you in one of the previous classes that a company that is geared means it has debt element in it. So to ungear, you are trying to get BE. So you have um, BE equals. B E times E over E plus D. Hmm? This D must be what? Who starts plus risk of debt times D over E plus D. Hmm? This is who starts. Who starts. Does it make sense? So this is the formula to on gear. So when you on gear, you've gotten the risk associated with the business that the company is going into. Now, in some questions, they might give you that risk directly, okay? In some questions, they might not give it to you directly. They'll give you the equity beta, that's the finance risk of the company. It's you that will now remove the debt element in it. That is what on gearing means. Because it's just the business case. Nothing concerns you with the capital structure of the proxy company. I don't want to get the risk associated with the um, sandal business, okay? Now, you now take that risk to step three. You now go and re gear. That is, let me put debt elements back in it. Which debt elements now? The debt element of my own company, the company of concern. There's always a, a company of concern in the question. 
that's not the proxy company. Proxy company is just used for information to get what the business risk. Okay, so you will get. And what's the formula to regain? You are trying to when you are regain, you are trying to get BE, right? BE is the risk that contains. BE is the risk that contains debt element. Now you will regain using what the company of concerns information, not proxy information. And the formula to regain is BE plus BA minus BD. Hmm? D over E into 1 minus T. I don't know if this formula reminds you of the M and N formula. This one too looks like work. But they are very easy formulas. They are very, very easy. And you can kind of make sense out of it by yourself. And how will you make sense out of it? By practicing questions and um, you keep using it. Like I said, you're just here to do explanations. Okay? So, this is the formula to regain. This BA is the BA you got here. You got in the business series of that Sandow business, right? You are using BA here. This BD is the risk of debt. Sometimes you can tell you that the debt of that company, that is the company of concern, is risk free. Sometimes you can give you a percentage, is the um, company of concern information. This D, that is the value of debt, value of equity, is for the company of concern, okay? The tax rate, what is the tax rate applicable to the company of concern? Most times it's just one tax rate that will give you. The B is what you are looking for, right? Is the B is what you are looking for. So in this one also, the information to use is the proxy company is the equity market value of equity of the uh, proxy company, market value of debt. So it makes sense. So that in case some of you have come across this formula, you don't understand what they are trying to say. That is what they are trying to say. Now number four, step four rather, is that this B that you have gotten now, use it to determine what cost of equity. You know, when they are investing in a new business, hmm, we are manufacturing bread before. Now we want to bring in Sandra. The cost of equity will change because we will probably raise capital to even if we use our existing capital because we put in a new risk, hmm, a new business risk. It will definitely affect the BE. Do you understand? So remember this one, you get what? Here, you get KE, right? You use the CAPM formula. You see why cost of capital is important in investment appraisal. You've never got into investment appraisal. So you say KE, that is the cost of equity, equals, remember the formula, right? Risk free rate plus equity beta into market rate minus risk free rate. So this BE that you are using here is what you got here. So you can see the steps. The last step is to now estimate work. You know, the company will have an existing work before, but this is like a revised work because there's a new project. I told you to, the existing work will, will be useless, right? So you know your formula for work, right? KW equals KE times E over E plus D, right? Plus KD, which must be equal stars, mm? times E over E plus D. So it's like step. So the new work you get, which will be a particular percentage, now use this percentage to discount the expected cash flow from that new project that you are going into. But that one is not, it doesn't cover in this question because this question is still, um, um, because this topic we are doing is still project specific cost of capital. So investment appraisal is the third topic because we will do bond valuation before investment appraisal. So now let us solve questions so that all these things will make sense. Mm -hmm.